Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it's great to catch up again with you and thank you very much for your follow up. Uh, today it will be the second and the last episode regarding the altar. Just uh, uh, I would like just to put a quick announcement. Uh, as of next to Friday, the 24th of July, uh, we will have a Bible study but it will be in Arabic on my Facebook uh, page, Sami Atta. Uh, if you would like to catch up, it would be uh, 7 p.m. Sydney time, which would be uh, 11 a.m. Cairo time. Uh, just a quick recap for last episode. Uh, we've seen the confusion. Uh, what material is the uh, altar and what shape? And we found that this comes back because it's the human uh, invention. It is not by God at all. Today we'll cover like uh, two more points related to the altar and after that two more points to see where is the actual uh, sanctuary or temple of the New Testament and a call at the end of it like to make a decision. Uh, we'll cover today consecration of the altar and why there is more than one altar in the church and what who is the saint the new testament sanctuary and a call to quit babylon the mother of the harlots i would like to start with a verse that's in the book of jeremiah chapter 8 please why have they the lord is talking about those like the people of uh, israel why have they provoked me to anger with their carved images with foreign idols this is the first half of it the second half is like a call from the Lord to us today or tonight. The harvest is past. The summer is ended and we are not saved. So be very careful. You have to make a decision in your life. You cannot just keep all your life just listening, enjoying, or sometimes maybe you ranking the person is up, down, whatever, and without uh, making a decision on your own. Okay. Now the consecration of the altar. Let's watch the, uh, the video of Pope Tawadros. Uh, uh, consecrating uh, uh, a church, then we come back for a comment. The masbah will take the name and we'll cover all of us with the mayron and we'll lift him around. You can see him like this. And we'll all lift him around the masbah and we'll cover the masbah with the mayron. We'll share it and we'll be happy and we'll be happy and we'll be happy and we'll be happy. بقى عندنا المذبح باسم هذا القديس او هذه القديسة في الكنيسة ويبقى دايما كلنا احنا شعب الكنيسة يبقى اسماء المذابح هم الشفعاء لنا يعني انتوا يا بختكم عندكم العذراء مريم عدوا وياي العذراء مريم والشهيد ماري جرجس والقديس بطرس الرسول عدوا ها قديس بولس الرسول قديس انبا انطونيوس والقديس انبا بولا وننزل تحت لقي القديسة دميانة والقديس فلوباتير ماركوريوس وأنبا برام ده إيه ده يا بختك القديسين دول يبقوا دول الشفعاء بتوعنا كلنا وبنصلي وبنسمي ولادنا على أساميهم وتعرف ابنك وبنتك أنا سميتك بطرس أو سميتك دميانة أو سميتك مريم علشان المذبح اللي في الكنيسة على اسم كده واخدين بالكم ويبقى سيرة القديس أو القديسة قدامكم وتشرحوها لولادكم ويعيشوا فيها ويحتفلوا بالأعياد اللي بتيجي مناسبتها في الكنيسة ويبقى فيه ترابط قوي ما بين شعب الكنيسة وقدسين الكنيسة كل سنة وانتم طيبين Here we go What does it mean? Consecrating means uh, anointing the stone and also the pictures, the icons using the man-made oil named the Myron, which is a totally man-made thing. And it has nothing to do with the Holy Spirit, by the way. They say that, but this is a, a, a false statement. Where they believe that the Holy Spirit now is dwelling in the stone, this is a heresy. This, this is uh, paganism. This is idol worship. When you think there is something materialistic and it is uh, having or uh, embracing divine power. 
what a disaster. This is a perfect idol worship. As of that time, women are not allowed even to touch this holy stone. How come? The lady was already anointed by the Holy Spirit, according to their belief. According, with the Myron, much better to say that. She is anointed with the Myron. And the stone, the dead stone, also anointed with the Myron. So which, is more, which one is more excellent than the other? The living uh, soul, the living body, or the dead stone? This also to add as they are totally blind. What is more valuable? A person or a stone? And both of them, according to your belief, are anointed with the same oil. Uh, I would like them to the dead idol stone. And it shall come to pass in the Old Testament, in the book of Joel, which is 800 years before Christ. And it shall come to, come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, not on the stones and the wood and the icons and the metal stuff, the utensils of the uh, of the church your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions and also on my servants on my men servants and on my maid servants i will pour out my spirit in those days joel 2 verse 28 and 29 so this is the prophecy this is the prophecy the Holy Spirit, Lord God, is going to give us the most precious thing. What is it? His Spirit. But not to dwell in the stones. Then you go and worship the stones. This is why they go around it and they kiss it and they offer incense in front of it and kneel before the icons and the statues and the, the, the stones. This is 100% idol worship. No matter what they say. I got some, like uh, a few points uh, as comments on what uh, uh, Pope Tadros said. Going around the altar, I would call it the white stone. And also, by the way, there's some other people, they go, you know them, they go around the black stone for the forgiveness of their sins. And they kiss it and they they worship it as well. And by the way, also, uh, in Zoroastrianism, it's a religion in Iran where actually they worship fire. They go also around it. From where did they get this tradition to go around it when they consecrate it? When we read in the Old Testament, when the Lord asked Moses and uh, like to, to consecrate the worship place he did not ask him to go around the uh, the altar so it's all man-made when it is man-made it is paganism it is idol worship number two he says the names of saint of the saints of the altars are our intercessors what a disaster what a paganism we have according to the bible one intercessor he is Jesus Christ in heaven. It's mentioned three times in the Bible for him. And one day we'll have a special episode about the mediation and the intercession of the saints as an answer to option of this book. Now, there is one intercession. By the way, Jesus himself, if we call there is a, pr a prayer intercession, Jesus himself did the prayer for intercession. He prayed for Peter, right? Nothing has nothing to do with atonement. Nothing to do with the mediation of Jesus between us and the Lord. So if he prayed for Peter, doesn't he pray for you? In fact, he prays for you. In the book of John, chapter 17, there's a longer prayer about for the disciples to be saved or to be kept uh, safe in the world. And also the Lord actually in his prayer in, in, in that chapter said, also I pray not for those only ones only, that like the, the apostles, but also for those who believe in me by them. So actually he prayed for you and for me. 
So I don't need any other intercessors, by the way. And he says, I don't have this intercessors now. Uh, number three, he says, call your kids after the names of the intercessors of the church. So now we give them like the priority. Now we like to revive now this idolism, uh, idolatry, idolatry, sorry. Number four, he says, explain the story of the saints and let them live it. I wish if he told them, Bible study with your kids to live according to the Bible, to live taking Jesus as the example. This is actually what the Bible teaches us, by the way. He says, let the word of God dwells in you, or just live according to the uh, word of God. I think in the, the in epistle of Philippine. And St. Paul also one time said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Like he says, do like what I'm doing. I'm imitating Christ, so be like me, I'm imitate Christ. And also in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, the first verse, it says, looking to the uh, author and the finisher of our salvation, Lord Jesus Christ. So our focus to be on Jesus Christ, not to shift our focus or the focus of our kids from the Lord Jesus and his salvation and the Bible into the saints and their stories, which more than 80% are either more yeah, like severely exaggerated or even totally uh, myth. Number five, before we go to the second point, he said, have a strong relationship between the congregation and the church saints. This is a shame. I wish if they say, now as you're celebrating this, now let's start a new start, have a stronger relationship with the Lord, with your Bible. But again, it is since the very beginning the old serpent would like to take the focus of people from the word of God and the character of God into something else, anything else, anything else. This is idolism. Uh, idolatry, sorry again, sorry again. Paganism. Now, I would like now to read something, like it is actually a great shame about the Holy Spirit. It is from the book of, uh, commentary of, uh, uh, Father Matthew Miskin on the book, The Gospel of St. John, volume 2, page 1288. It's in Arabic, but I have the translation for you in English. It's a disaster thing. We'll see now. This is the right of anointing the Pope of Ethiopia. Before Ethiopia got like being independent, it was totally related to the Coptic Orthodox Church in Egypt. So they, they can appoint a Pope, but not a Patriarch. Patriarch like the head of all of them. But the patriarch must like blow or breathe in the face of the Pope. In the olden days, it was very hard to travel. So if the Pope is very old, what he does? Now look at this disaster. So what happens is, uh, this is the right of anointing the Pope of Ethiopia by the Coptic Orthodox Patriarch. The Coptic Patriarch, who is the Bishop of Alexandria, Blows in a sh in a sheep skin. Uh -huh. Why? Till it is full of his breath. Makes sense. Why that? Then, since he sends this sheep skin filled with his breath, his breath, send it with a special person. Why? To be opened in the face of the chosen person in Ethiopia. This way. The anointment is completed as from the apostolic succession through the consecration of the Spirit. Can you believe this? Like they fill the skin with the Holy Spirit. This is the Holy Spirit. This is junk. This is trash. This is heresy. This is the best way to describe it. So we've seen now the Holy Spirit dwells in the stone and in the, uh, uh, in the wood and the stuff and in the metal stuff. And now we see also the Holy Spirit, you can fill the, uh, 
like the uh, the sheep skin or any container with the Holy Spirit and just open it in front of the face of someone, now he got the Holy Spirit. This as it does. That. What if, if a fly was going there, by the way, or a bird? Because now the whole thing will fill the whole, like the whole room, for example, or part of it. Can you see? This is what happened when men began, or men began to intervene, or actually to invent a worship system. Now let's go to one more disastrous thing. Why? Uh, this is the first point. The second one. Why there should be more than one altar in the church? Now, let's read this together. From a site called. Orthodoxy is our life. It says the following. Multiple, altar, multiple altars in every church. Why? It is a tradition, of course. It is not in the Bible. It is a tradition not to have more than a mass in the same day as the altar is like the person who is going to have communion must be fasting the stone must fast for nine hours this is applied also on the priest placement and the holy service utensils is this logic is, can a person with one living cell in his mind will say that if you go say that to one of the doctors he will refer you to a psychiatrist if you tell him uh, at home I cannot use this touch or touch this table or uh, unless nine hours passes because it fasts like me and they are and then it break fasts. Now you understand. So in the Coptic Orthodox Church, the stone accepted the Holy Spirit absolutely heresy. The stone fasts and also break fast. Not only that, the utensils like the mastir and the chalice and the tray. Not only that. Even the, the, the vestments. I'll give you an example. The tonia. In other words, call it tonia. Of course, everyone knows tonia. All right? So what is it? Assume I'm a, I'm a deacon. Good. I'm a good guy. I go early. I used to. Yeah. I go to the first mass. I, I'm an early bird. I do. Yeah, I used to do the tasbiha, then the, the, the mass. Then I come back, have a rest, and go to Sunday school for service. And if I'm going out after the mass, and a friend of mine who is coming to attend the second mass and he told me oh sammy i forgot my tonya at home can i take can i take yours i must say no i can't give it to you why because now it is not fasting it is because it attended one one mass you cannot attend with it another mass unless nine hour passes so my tonya becomes now uh fasting gosh can you believe this my dear brother and sister what do you call this heresy yeah Heresy. In the Old Testament, there was only one altar and the same altar, many sacrifices to be offered in the same day. No problems at all. And no one to go around it, by the way. This is all paganism, like idol worshipping, if I say it yeah, more clearer this way. So this is what I wanted to, to tell you today. Uh, number three, New Testament sanctuary. Yes, there is a sanctuary or temple. What is it? The New Testament sanctuary. Yes. You also as living stones. So the living stones are the true believers. Are being built up a spiritual house. This is a sanctuary. This is a new temple of the New Testament. Spiritual house. Composed of or built by all the living stones around the whole world. A holy priesthood. So there is no special priesthood anymore. We all priests and kings. To offer up what? Spirit, spiritual sacrifices. Not any more like materialistic sacrifices anymore. Acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. First Peter 2 5. Alright? Got another one. First Corinthians chapter 3. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you if anyone defiles the temple of god god will destroy him for the temple of god is holy which temple which you are which you are so out of those two references we understand the new testament temple is what the living stones 
which is the uh, believers, the true believers. And we offer, we all, priests, and we all, wherever we are, we offer sacrifices, spiritual sacrifices, accepted by God through the, in the name of Jesus. So this is what's happening now. So I wish if you can uh, understand the situation. Uh, this, uh, we say, traditional church or idol worshiping church is called in the book of uh, Revelation is called Babylon, the mother of all the harlots. And there is a call in the book of Revelation that I would like to, to read it for you. But still, it's just a call. It's a suggestion, but it's entirely up to you. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, saying what? Come out of her. What is her? He was talking about Babylon, the mother of all harlots. And harlots in the, like in the Bible say means the church that is worshipping idols. Come out of here, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you what receive her plagues. So if you stay there, this is the book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 4. So if you insist to stay there, it's up to you. But you will get touched, and you might like, uh, get some of its punishment. And I would like to repeat again the very first verse that I read when I started the episode from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 8. Why have they provoked me to anger with their car car carved images, with foreign idol? So actually this is provoking God when they call the altar, first of all, when they invent altars. There is no altars in the New Testament at all. It's all idol worship. This is provoking to the Lord. The harvest, now this is the call again, the harvest has, is past. Like this is the time where people should harvest. And the summer is ended and we are not saved. Until when will you continue just making up your mind, listening and here and there and maybe ranking the person and you do nothing about it? Maybe you miss the chance and you, don't, you do not know where you're going. Okay. Uh, uh, there is a verse in the book of Jeremiah, by the way, that I skipped because I was concerned about timing. It says, uh, so here we go. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 2, the Lord was talking to his people in Judah. He says, for according to the number of your cities are your gods, O Judah. Jeremiah 2, 28. What the story of this verse? In those days, they used to have for every city... A defender or an intercessor that was a like a, a, a god so they so this is what is meant by for according to the number of your cities are your gods so at that time judah which was like the people of god for every city they appointed a god that as a defender or intercessor for the city that was actually uh, a pagan practice actually that crept into or steeped into the system and they did it and it is up to today i'll tell you where you can find this and then i'll come to the altars again i have seen this in italy greece romania and bulgaria and i think also in the rest of the uh, eastern europe countries uh, they used to have in the olden days before the fourth century they have uh, a god to protect the city and on the day of the feast of that god the whole city is on a holiday, the city only, not the whole country. After Constantine, uh, in the 4th century, they replaced those gods with the saints. And until today, on that day of the saint, again the city is in a, in a, a, a public holiday, only the city. It is the same thing. So the verse says, according to the number of your cities, you are your gods. O Judah, I would like now to put this as a comment similar to this verse. I would say, according to the number of your authors are your gods, O Coptic Church. Because 
First of all, no, no altars. Even when they make altars, they call them not after the name of God, but after the name of Saint, 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 Saint. We know very well this is an idol worship system. If the Lord doesn't come, we'll meet again in another uh, episode. I wish you all the best. I wish you to be, in, to be encouraged to study your Bible. And may the Lord bless you, bless us all, and we'll see you again. Salam and